the narcissist has no respect, the narcissist has no respect for anyone or anything. They don't respect their parents growing up. They don't respect relatives. They don't respect their peers. As the narc matures and is expected to act as an adult their lack of respect becomes more covered. Yes, the narc did learn one thing, to get any sort of response from others around them they do need to emulate, to fake, respect. Yes, the narc learned early on that respect is something that human beings expect from each other. Respect is given and received in a normal exchange between two people. So the narc did understand that totally and they used that fake respect to manipulate those around them. Yes when the narc wanted something from mom or dad they feigned obedience and even reverence for their parents and to not give themselves away they gradually, seamlessly reverted back to disdain once that item was obtained. The narc knew full well that insubordination was frowned upon by their superiors and the last thing the narc wanted was to let it slip that the narc never really considered those superiors even equal to them. Yes the narc considered every authority figure in their lives inferior to them from as early as they could begin to think of those around them. Only as the narc got older did that narc realize that they had to keep that dark secret of having disdain for everyone around them concealed. Yes, society frowned upon that. So yes that narc never had any respect for any human being, but they also had absolutely zero respect for institutions. The narc didn't buy into the family hierarchy at all since they never felt it was appropriate for their parents to have authority over them. The narc felt the same way about school, why in the world should they be forced to listen to those teachers when the narc, at least in their mind already knew it all. Yes that narc was always inflexible and unteachable, but the narc did learn. That learning was all on the narc's terms, however. Yes, the narc would educate themselves picking and choosing what to study. Those studies were quite unconventional. No, there were no guidebooks or classes on being the best liar in the room. There were no AP classes in treachery and deceit. Gaslighting wasn't even a subject to be studied, because even to this day that word and all of its meaning has yet to be mainstream. So the narc did learn and learn quite well, it just wasn't learning that would benefit society. It was learning solely for the purpose and benefit of the narc and the narc alone. That learning did become more beneficial to society however when the narc realized that they needed to work for a living to get money and all of the things that they wanted for themselves. So the narc readily received their training and mastered the skills to fulfill their tasks in any job they took, but that learning was solely for selfish reasons, the side effect was that the narc actually was a productive individual. Yes. Productivity was a mere unintended consequence. But make no mistake the narc milked everything they could to leverage that productivity as efficiently as possible. Yes, any good thing the narc did always had to give maximum benefit to the narc and the bare minimum to others. So typically the narc gave the appearance of building one position up after another and seemed like a loyal employee, but when that position was mined for every ounce of benefit, or a new and better opportunity arose, the narc abandoned their post for fresher ground. Yes that loyal narc employee was always looking for a better opportunity. The search was done carefully, behind the employer's back, and then the narc's excuse for leaving was that an opportunity was presented to them serendipitously, without any effort being put in on their part. Yes, it was an offer the narc just couldn't refuse. It is uncanny how the narc cheated on their employer just like they cheated on their partners. The narc is always looking for a newer, a fresher opportunity and they see no reason to allow a little thing like commitment and respect and loyalty to get in their way. Promises either explicit or implied can always be gaslit out of existence as the narc rewrites history and moves on to their new supply. Yes, the long list of employment positions is only rivaled by the narc's personal endeavors in relationships. But the narc was well aware of the need for references and was very delicate and gentle in moving from one job to the next. Yes, leaving on good terms was important, but of course the narc frequently revealed their treachery in one job or another and the way that narc dealt with those failures to fully deceive was to simply leave holes in their resume and call themselves a caretaker of an elder or a stay-at-home parent, or any other feasible excuse. Yes the narc I was with actually called herself a homemaker, Okay. 
the reality is that many of those spaces in the resume are actually nuclear disasters that left the employer in a huge bind and required huge effort to repair the damage that was done. But the narc leveraged it all and always made sure their reputation or billboard was intact. Those messy departures from one job or another were always followed with threats and in the modern day workplace it is in the employer's interest to let things slide. After all that employer has actual responsibilities and a true commitment to the services and products they provide. The employer needs to focus on the actual work that needs to be done. So that is the narc in the workplace and the common theme there is that they have no respect for anyone that is in authority over them. They simply feign respect because it is a necessary tool to get what they want. The narc is no different in their relationships. The narc never respected a single one of the long list of partners they accumulated over their lifetime. Oh yes, the narc felt themselves quite generous if they let a current partner go gently, with one lame excuse or another. The real reason was almost invariably that a new partner was already obtained and the narc needed to do house cleaning. Yes. A clean departure would allow the narc to enjoy that new relationship unencumbered. So it's clear that the gentle release was simply because it benefited the narc. How else can we know this? Well, once the narc had fresh supply, they simply had no incentive or motivation to put effort into the existing relationship, so the narc frequently got sloppy and blew their cover. After all that victim wasn't really even worth any more effort. As a result the narc either inadvertently or by design revealed the calloused, heartless, depraved creature under the mask right in front of their soon-to-be ex-partner. After all, that narc no longer had anything to lose. So in that scenario the narc showed their true nature and didn't feel any need whatsoever to feign respect for that discarded partner. Yes, the narc was ruthless and displayed a chilling lack of even an ounce of humanity. If it isn't in the narc's interest they don't expend any energy whatsoever on another human being. Yes, the narc actually wants to lose that partner, so why show any respect? Instead the narc puts their lack of respect for another person on full display and when the victim is exposed to that level of depravity it shocks them to the core. Yes the narc exposed themselves in the heat of the moment and this gave them an immediate benefit. But long term that narc created a problem for themselves since now there was someone who knew their secret, knew the truth. Gaslighting, reframing and a total rewrite of the past was used on the victim to confuse and disorient them. Lies, slander, treachery, and bearing false witness was used to repudiate the victim to those outside of the relationship. Yes. A smear campaign with flying monkeys is the narc's cure all for everything when they can no longer pull the wool over the victim's eyes or silence them. But a victim that educates themselves and puts together the pieces will know the narc's game. That victim will heal no matter how many flying monkeys or tools of the trade the narc uses against them. The narc's lack of respect extends to God as well. The narc may convince themselves they are worshipping God, but make no mistake, deep inside, at the subconscious level the narc believes themselves to be God. The narc will always have full authority in their own lives and never truly submit to or even admit to the existence of a higher power. In the narc's mind the definition of God is open to interpretation. Even if that narc professes Christianity that narc's God is subject to the narc's rules. Talk about the almighty God and the rules laid down by that supreme being and the narc will give lip service and agree, but no way would that type of God, the true God, ever be acceptable to a narcissist. That God would require the narc's respect. No, the narc will keep the God of their creation, the God that they can redefine whenever necessary. The God that decides that everything the narc does is correct and noble no matter how depraved or evil. The God that lets the narc do and say whatever they want to do. The God that respects the narc. Now it becomes clear why a green jade Buddha is the narc's perfect false idol. So any appearance the narc gives of allowing God authority in their lives is a mere act. Yes the pattern that they show in their work and personal life extends to their relationship with God. Religion is seen as merely a very useful tool to make others regard them as fine human beings, as good people, but the pattern is exactly the same. The narc is simply counterfeiting the appearance of piety to bolster their billboard. Conversely, 
If atheism is considered the in thing with a group they want to be a part of, that narc will emulate that as well. Feigning atheism is one of the few times that the narc is portraying a more accurate exterior, one that more closely resembles what is actually going on inside their warped, diseased psyche. But make no mistake, that atheism is an act, because the narc does believe in a god and only one god, themselves. Yes, Satan has them on a tight leash and the narc never realizes that in all of their efforts to be number one in deceit, they never see that they themselves are the ones that are the most deceived. The narc's love affair with trendy social causes is easily explained since these causes are the perfect venue for the narc to disguise their lack of respect. Why? Because the narc has the perfect ability to feign genuine concern and dedication to a cause with little or no scrutiny of their true motives, and the payback to their ego is enormous in relationship to the amount of effort they expend. Yes, what better way to have society admire them than to be a supporter of a cause that is prominent with the important people of the world. Yes, that narc's inner hollow lack of concern will never be questioned in a group setting. Again it is all a matter of doing the math for the narc and those social causes give the largest payback for the smallest amount of input. Social causes are the ultimate candy for the narc, because these causes give the narc the most exposure, the greatest direct infusion of energy to their overinflated and totally fake public persona or billboard. How incredibly sick it is to cover up your total selfishness by appearing to be just the opposite in public. True story, my ex was passionately championing suicide prevention on a social site, while at the same exact time she was teaming up with her weasel creep friend to try and push me over the edge. Yes the depraved hypocrisy of the narcissist takes your breath away. That calloused cretin was all of the sudden concerned with PTSD since her next target would be, and had to be a military man and that creep turned generating PTSD in her ex-partner into a fine art. Those chains have now been broken by the way. The narc's lack of respect extends to institutions, their own country, and even their own heritage, since everything has to bow down to the narcissist. Nothing is sacred to the narc. The narc has no respect for marriage. Once that narc is married the obligations and responsibilities that the marriage contract imposes don't even figure into any of their plans. Why? Simply because that narc has absolutely no respect for the institution of marriage and sadly has no respect for their partner either. Marriage is simply a tool to get the narc what they want. Yes, marriage gives prestige. Being seen publicly as committed to another human being means the narc is viewed as a prime mover by society. Marriage gives all of the other perks as well, such as financial stability. Never does the narc even begin to appreciate the sanctity of the institution of marriage, the importance of it, the incredible gift it can be when done right. But again, the narc has absolutely no respect for the institution of marriage. If the narc wants an extramarital relationship, that narc will never allow a marriage to get in their way. The narc doesn't respect the family unit. They didn't respect their parents growing up and they frequently don't even respect their role as parent when they are older. Yes, a narc that doesn't take that role of parent seriously probably commits the worst act of disrespect a human being is capable of. Yes, the narc will seem to sacrifice themselves but even with their children the narc always takes as much benefit from the role of parent for themselves as possible. Does the narc love their children? Maybe they actually do and maybe they actually sacrifice for their children, but it is never even close to the level of obligation that parenting should be. The narc just simply isn't capable of thinking more of others than of themselves. Not even their own children. I will spare a poignant anecdote that was related to me to protect the innocent about a person who actually put huge efforts into cultivating a new relationship when they should have been focusing exclusively on a child that was in severe need. So, does the narc respect the authorities, police for example? Same as all of the above, respect is feigned because it is necessary, but only to the extent that it is necessary. Yes. My narc ex was followed by a police officer through town and finally stopped and told off the officer asking why he was following her. She felt safe because she believed she hadn't broken any laws. 
The narc also made a point of being close to some of the officers in town and avoided numerous tickets by taking advantage of those associations. But actual respect for authority? Not a chance. The list of how the narc disrespects everything can go on and on, but is there anything that the narc respects? The only form of respect a narc has is that which is motivated by fear. Fear of public humiliation, fear of being publicly unmasked, fear of being found out for the fake, phony frauds that they are. Only then will the narc actually give the appearance of yielding if it is necessary. But once that danger is evaded the narc will make a point of returning with a vengeance and have absolutely no mercy when they have gotten the upper hand and give their payback. Yes, the narc never forgets and the narc will never allow someone to get the last word, the narc will never allow themselves to be bested. Never is this more clearly felt and comprehended than when a narc thinks they were discarded by their partner, then resumes the relationship with that person. The sole reason for that narc to get back together with their partner is to exact revenge and make very sure that the partner is totally abandoned when at their most vulnerable. Sick but true. So the pattern of disrespect becomes clear and it is the same exact pattern in every single setting the narc enters into. No genuine respect for anything or anyone, fake respect for everything and everyone and the only goal for the narc is to extract as much benefit for themselves in every single instance. So, what if the narc actually does things that are beneficial to others? Well again, those are simply unintended consequences, but make no mistake whatsoever, the fruits of the narc's efforts are primarily for selfish reasons and the narc makes sure they are the greatest beneficiaries of those fruits. Of course no one knows what is really going on in someone else's head, so why make such a harsh judgment? Well here is a key, the narc helps many people over the course of their lives and actually can be seen as a positive force at least for a while, but then the narc gives themselves away and shows they never really cared at all. How is this? Well once a narc is done with any situation and they no longer have any use for a person or a job that narc frequently burns down and destroys every one of their positive accomplishments. Yes every good act and act of apparent kindness and concern is literally blown up leaving the partner, or the job, or others that depended on that narcissist in far worse condition than before that narc made their appearance. Yes the narc literally destroys all of the good that they have done and then does additional damage, leaving things worse off than before they ever appeared on the scene. Why would someone do this? Because they never really cared or respected and by blowing things up either on purpose or inadvertently that lack of concern is fully exposed. Yes the narc could have easily avoided doing the damage and would have avoided it if they ever really genuinely cared. Having your partner and confidant suddenly drop their mask and become a totally different person, a stranger is one of the most incredible shocks anyone in a relationship could experience, that shock is only equaled when an informed observer sees and fully comprehends the incredible hypocrisy of the narc in a public setting. Wolves in sheep's clothing, like whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. Choose your metaphor. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcomed. Peace be with you.